and I, I agree with all of those. You, you've left a few out that are sometimes um, mentioned. Um, splenomegaly, but not just splenomegaly, symptomatic splenomegaly, right? We often feel a spleen tip, it doesn't mean we have to start therapy. But the one that I find the most controversial among my, my uh, colleagues is leukocytosis. George, so it's an, uh, an excellent point. Uh, I think if we look at, you know, what are our goals of therapy by our current kind of Euro European leukemia net criteria, it helps us to back up a little bit into some of these parts. So leukocytosis, through many different analysis, many different studies, and now even a more recent meta-analysis, you know, clearly is a risk factor for thrombosis. Now, there's a couple caveats. You know, one, we don't have definitive proof that the correction of leukocytosis gets rid of that risk. I think we assume that, uh, and I think it's reasonable given overall the relatively lower risk of the therapies that we're, that we're utilizing uh, for these individuals. You know, so does correcting it, can I prove that correcting it decreases that uh, to, to a lower degree? I would say that the symptom part is, is a key part it, as it relates to uh, the spleen or vascular symptoms from the counts being too high or, or things of that nature. I think the other point I would make is that it's key that it's a very dynamic disease, meaning you know, there's your initial part, but then there's really the monitoring. You know, I think patients need to have their, their blood counts monitored, clearly more frequently at first, as they're getting their phlebotomies to get their hematocrit under control. Uh, I'd say patients that are more of a maintenance phase, you know, in my clinic, that's every six to eight weeks of at least a blood test. They may not need a face-to-face -face visit at that frequency, depending upon how they're doing. But I do think, you know, blood counts not to spread out so that uh, if you're uh, getting off the rails, either in terms of progression, overshooting, et cetera, uh, is done. And then finally, really serial evaluation of the difficulties that they're following. Uh, pruritus uh, and these other symptoms are really important to take into account. You know, these are not patients that solely are managed on the basis of how well their counts are controlled. So, you know, in the CytoPV study published by Mark Yoli, clearly a difference in the risk of thrombotic events, um, uh, less than 45 or 45 to 50 percent. Even though the study never f finished accrual, I mean, there was still a difference at three years. <clears throat> but then Barbui did a secondary analysis of that study showing that the risk of thrombosis was also linked to the white blood cell count. Uh, dividing patients into quartiles and, and showing with each quartile, especially when you get over 11,000, uh, that there's a higher risk of uh, thrombosis. So, Mary Frances, uh, not that you speak for all of Europe, but is there a different perception in Europe as in terms of the white blood cell count? Should it be treated? I think that's a very difficult question. You come up with the 11. Some of the other studies talk about a 15 cutoff. So if you say control the white cell count, what white cell count? Um, so again, and when we re wrote our guidelines, we looked at all this and said you couldn't actually come up with a level between, between what, but you, where you wanted to keep that white cell count below. Um, and really, I don't think anyone in Europe will advocate treating solely on the basis of a white cell count. The patients we would be aware of, the patients whose white cell count is going progressively up, um, and that's where you may want to come in, even in a low risk patient, to consider cytoreductive therapy. Um, but I think it's, it's very difficult. And this question comes up all the time because of all those papers, this patient's white cell count is 12, should I treat them? But lots of patients have that. Smokers have high white cell counts. and. Right. Um, and they sit at that, and I think it's the one that's progressively going up that I would be wary of. I also say I've certainly many patients in my clinic with high white cell counts, and they get their cytoreductive therapy and they get their hematocrit control, but it's actually very difficult to get the white cell count down. I see it as one of the risk factors for sure, and as like Ruben was saying, like I think you have to put all those information together to decide. It definitely could be a information that's helpful. I think the challenge, even from the study, is like we don't know that hematocrit control was it just from the phlebotomies or cytoreductive therapy. So the patients on that study, anybody that had hematocrit less than 45 did better, but some of those patients did get cytoreductive therapy, and that also controlled their white count. It's really challenging to find that patients that will just be getting phlebotomies 
where their hematocrit is controlled and they still have leukocytosis to figure out really the impact of, of the leukocytosis. But it's definitely for me one of the risk factors, things we monitor. Uh, off topic a little bit, we are starting to look at the leukocytosis in other diseases like myelofibrosis, CMML, because you know historically we were trained that you, just, you don't do anything, you just observe them. But actually, if you start digging into it a little bit more, you do see some end organ damage like renal impairment, pleural effusions, uh, complications for patients that have leukocytosis. So I think we will probably be, be revisiting the issue of leukocytosis, not just in P. vera, in all those myeloproliferative diseases. So. Well, and even outside of neoplasms, uh, if you go back to the data supporting the use of hydroxyurea in sickle cell, it's, you know, we hypothesize that hydroxyurea increased hemoglobin F levels, it gets metabolized to nitric oxide if it's a vasodilator. But remember, in those studies, the hydroxyurea and placebo doses were pushed to get the white counts lower. Could it be that the decreased risk of vaso-occlusive um, crises was actually related to the leukocyte, uh, reduction in leukocytosis?